All right, YouTube, this is uh, part three of the series on club kick drums and dance music kick drums. So where we left off, we had just added another chain into our instrument rack. And, and what we did was we kind of, uh, we added a little bit more distortion and whatnot. So now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this chain and also uh, be aware of these um, volumes on these. Um, because I mean they do add up and in the end they're gonna they can screw you over. I'm gonna throw them to the different stereo um, sides and I'm gonna change uh, some of the parts so maybe I'll reduce the drive move this around you know and, uh, add a little bit more overdrive at a different area you know slightly different throw the tone up and so now if we listen to it these two together can hear very, very stereo. Um, but if we listen to it together, they're a little bit too uh, too high pitch for the rest of the kick. Um, so I'm actually going to turn down the tone. On these. Just realized I sold it. Every So there's a lot of a lot of click there, um, which isn't bad. And but I think I kind of I'm gonna let more of the bass through here on these, so it gets more of the kind of punch there. Yeah, the whole time though, listen to uh, nothing too too hard. So that's just a little bit more. Punch. So now I'm gonna resample it, so and see what it looks like in relation to the other kick. So right now we're looking very big and fat and almost square wavy up there, and we're getting a little bit more um, distortion up here. So you can see the kind of click is coming through. We need, I'd say, we need a little bit more um, on there to really get it where I want it. So I might uh, increase the decay on these a little bit. A little bit. And we don't want too much. It's about a hundred. See how that sounds. So I'm gonna solo this again. Hmm. Alright, well that's not too bad right there. But um something else we could do, if you listen to this one there's a lot of just other kind of noise in there. So some people like will add uh, hi-hats and whatnot in there. So I think I might give that a little try. I, I rarely do that in my kicks, but you know, why not? Um, so I'm just gonna make another chain and find a hi-hat in here somewhere that really, or some kind of percussive sound, you know, that I think would add more punch and whatnot to it. So let's see. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with percussion and see what we got in here. Uh, blue zone, they always have good stuff. Nope, uh, not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Alright, vengeance. It's kind of a punchy, interesting sound. I'm gonna come back to that one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this guy. Oh yeah, I had it uh, solo. So I'm gonna down the volume a lot, and definitely gonna do this. Yeah. Yeah, so now it's a little bit more percussive and punchy. Um, and now, let's see. I'm going to add some distortion on this guy, too, from every direction. Actually, I think I'll do overdrive. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of want this... 
nice add some noise to the punt or the kick. It's almost, uh, I think the decay is a little bit too long right now. So I'm going to take a little ease, you know. Yeah, so that's uh, now if I'm going I'm to resample it again, I'm probably going to turn this guy down just a little bit. So now you can see we're getting a little bit more uh, resemblance up there. You know, just getting a little bit more crunchy and um, yeah, all that jazz. So you can see here that uh, that click is, I got to kind of. See, see that little gray thing right there, the, the horizontal kind of triangle? That means it's fading in, so the whole click isn't really present in the Vengeance one. But you can see it in the one I've just made. All right, so let's see what time on that. Okay. So right there, that could be it. And the, the decay is kind of weirding me out a little bit. So, um,. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to shorten the notes that trigger it. I mean, then, so now when I sample it, we're going to get more of that like just shape. It would, uh, even more resembles the other one. And now let's see. Uh, I'm going to add effects to all of these, and I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to get one more sampler with another instrument in there. I think that'd be cool. Um, maybe a, a hi-hat, maybe. Because I always, I always hear people talk about layering hi-hats. Or something wants me kind of want to do a snare, though. Yeah, I feel like that would... Like, just kind of the crunch of the snare. That might be fun. But this is all to taste, of course. Yeah, so I should lower that a lot. And so, just toggle it on. Kind of almost too much noise. I almost want. Oh, you know what's happening though? The sample is actually getting pitched down. So if you move the root key up, the sample will be higher pitch. And so I'm just, that's just what I did. And I'm gonna check my time. All right. Um. Now I'll probably throw some a little overdrive. On it. So that's just a little subtle thing. I don't know if I'm a huge, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it right now to be honest, because it's kind of. Oh. Maybe EQ it a little bit. And just get the punch. All right, yeah, that works. Um, and so those are all the little components that I'm gonna have in, in it. And then in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how to like glue all the sounds together. And so it's like, and get the, the final kick to place in your mix. So let's go to, what is it, part four now? <laughs> yeah.